Every good guitar teacher will tell you it's really important to learn the locations of the notes on the neck, to be able to visualize the neck in a useful way. But does that mean you have to memorize a bunch of scales and charts and theory? No, it does not. Notes on the neck are organized both lengthwise and vertically across the neck. Today we're going to have a quick look at three tools that will allow us to quickly learn note locations on the neck of the guitar using these two axes, lengthwise and the width. Tool number one root note locations on the E string. Tool number two, the movable E form chord shape. Okay, that's this bad boy that we all know. Uh, and tool number three, the triads of the E form chord shape. So the triads are just subcomponents of that big chord shape and we're going to look at what they are and how to use them in this context. The notes, across, the notes along the length of each string provide us with a horizontal reference, an easy way to find both notes and chords. For today, we're going to focus mainly just on the notes of the low E string. The notes on the E string are logically organized, simple to find, and easy to learn if we learn them in a practical way. Okay, here are the basic seven notes on the guitar. Open E, F, up two frets, G, A, B, 8th fret C, 10th fret D, and then we're back up to E here at the 12th fret. Here is a handy diagram of the notes on the neck. Leave me a comment if you'd like to get a free copy of this diagram. As I mentioned before, we're only going to work with the lowest E string today, but I will point out that the high E string has the same notes as the lowest. The first tools we are going to use to understand the layout of notes across the width of the neck are chords. So here's the uh, E form chord at the fifth fret being used in a major way. All chords on the guitar are made up of one of five chord shapes. If you're not already familiar with the caged chords, click on the link above to learn more. But here they are on the neck. I'm going to show you each of the five uh, caged chord shapes, but I'm going to use each one to play a C. So here's a C form chord playing a C. Here's an A form chord playing a C. Here's a G form chord playing a C. Here's an E form chord playing a C. And here's the D form chord playing a C. As you can see, all five chords can be repositioned on the neck to make other chords. We reposition the E form chord by sliding the whole chord shape up or down the, the neck using the root note on the E string as a key. If I play an E form chord with the root here at the fifth fret, which is the note A, then this becomes an A chord. If I move that root note up to the tenth fret, that's the note D, this becomes a D chord. Movable E minor form chord. So now I'm playing the E form chord, but in the minor version, if I play this at the sixth fret, that's the note B flat. This is a B flat minor. If I move the root note up to the C at the eighth fret, that becomes a C minor. These are the basics of using movable chord shapes as a tool to quickly play a song in such a way that it strengthens our knowledge of the note locations on the E string. Let's have a look at an example of how we would do this. Let's play this simple chord progression using only E form chords. Okay, so we're going to play one measure on each chord, but we're going to use the E form chord to play all of these chords. Okay, this is an excellent way to learn where all the notes on the low E string are, and it's an excellent way to practice using the E chord form to play every chord in your song. 
It's not that we always want to use this chord voicing for everything, but this chord form is very common in rock and blues as well as other styles. So we will see this application in practice in many, many songs. My progression starts here with an open E minor chord. Next I'm playing the E form chord in the major form at the third fret, G. Next I'm going to uh, play the minor version of the E form chord, but this time at the fifth fret. So that's the note A, this is an A minor chord. And then I'm going to return to the open E minor that I started with. This is close up 12, open E minor that I started with, or close up 13 or something. So here's the progression. If I put those all together, please. So in that progression, we learned the note locations of the note E, the note G, the note A, and we learned them in the context of uh, the progression from a really great song, Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. Of course, we can repeat this exercise with any progression, but for now, let's look at the next tool that will open up the notes across the whole width of the neck in a very useful way. Triads. So far, we've been just looking at the E form chord, and we have been looking at the major, and the minor uh, chord, uh, chord sounds. But we can break these familiar chord shapes down into smaller, more useful components that we call close triads. Here you can see the top three notes of the E form chord shown as a group. And this is what we call the close triad of the E form chord on the one, two, three set. Okay, and you will notice that the th root, third, and fifth are um, and you will notice that the root, third, and fifth are marked on the diagram. Um, I'm showing the triad on the third, one, two, three set. Okay, each triad component of a larger chord voice is a small group of notes that we can choose from or play together that will always sound perfect when played along with the parent chord. So if we want to make up a riff or write a little phrase and melody, these notes of the one, two, three set triad of the major chord will always sound fantastic when played over the corresponding chord. So here I'm going to play a C first, just a basic C. Okay. So here I have a C chord playing and I can use any of these notes in the one, two, three set triad to play along with the corresponding C chord. Let's have a look at the next close triad. Here you will see the next three notes of the E form chord shown as a group. This is what we call the close triad on the two, three, four set. Now I'm gonna play a riff on the two, three, four set. Here's the two, three, four set. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, but now with a riff from the two, three, four set. So here I have a C chord playing in the background, and once again I can use any of the notes in the 2, 3, 4 triad to play along with the corresponding C chord. Let's look at the next close triad. Here you can see the next three notes of the E form chord shown as a group. This is what we call the 3, 4, 5 set, or the close triad on the 3, 4, 5 set. So here I have a C chord playing again in the background, and once again I can use any of this new set of notes in the three, four, five set triad to play along with the corresponding C chord. I'm gonna play on the three, four, five set, which is this. Okay, and uh, so I'm gonna play something else. Here's my riff. Okay, and finally, let's look at the last close triad. Here you can see the lowest three notes of the E form chord shown as a group and we're playing something out of the chord position here. Um, and this is what we call the close triad of the E form chord on the four, five, six set. These are the, this is the lowest triad. And then uh, I'm gonna play something on the four, five, six set. Now on the four, five, six set, 
I might just use the 456 set as the bass instead of playing the chord. Gives me a nice alternative sound, but it's really the same notes as the, the root of the chord. So I'm going to play the riff using the uh, 456 set uh, triad. So here I have a C chord playing in the background, and once again I can use any of this new set of notes in the 456 triad to play along with the corresponding C chord. Now you may have noticed that I'm demonstrating these ideas in a very practical and hands-on way, but with very little theoretical explanation. I'm doing it on purpose. My approach as a teacher is to get you playing with and using these tools first, probably in the simplest way. This is your most important this is your most important learning. In short, play them first, explain them later. Let's look at a basic demonstration of how we might practice using these close triads so that we can get used to where they are and how they sound. And while we're at it, we'll start to learn to use them to teach us note locations too. However, my caveat is we're learning note locations in terms of learning clusters of notes that we know belong with a particular chord or that are always going to work with a particular chord. It will be stage two or even stage three learning to come back and look at the triads from a structural perspective and the actual note names. We'll get to that, but we need to learn to play them first. I'm just improvising an idea here. you through what I'm doing here. This is a simple practice outline that you can use to practice movable bar chords and their corresponding triads using the chords of any song you know. In this example I'm using these chords. I'm going to use an A minor, a C, an F, a C, and then an E minor. So here, I'm going to start off with the A minor. Then I'm going to go to the C major. Then I'm going to go to the F major. And then I'm going to go to the C again. And then I'm going to go to the E minor. As I've mentioned earlier, our agenda here is not memorization or theoretical analysis. The reason for that is I don't believe either of those things will help you immediately play better. Instead, our learning objective today was to demonstrate how these tools work together to give you an immediate practical familiarity and a practice method so that you can learn how chords and triads work together with your fingers and your ears. Incidentally, you can immediately use the practice method I demonstrated today, and you can use this same method on any song you know. So today, we had a quick look at three tools that help us to quickly gain a practical familiarity with note locations on the neck of the guitar, lengthwise and across the width of the neck. We began by looking at the root note locations on the E string. We, sorry, we looked at the movable E form chord shape both in the major and minor sound, and we also looked at the triads of the E-form chord shape. Join me again for the next chapter on triads for beginner guitar. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the triads in the A-form chord, and I'll add the link above when that one is ready. There's a lot more to learn, and you'll find it easier and easier as we go. Please subscribe and like the video, and if you're looking for more practical learning about music videos, uh, click on one of these ones that are popping up here. I am Bonner, and I hope that you will visit Bonner Guitar again soon.